as a military veteran myself, this piece, this finish, um, was just a fun one to do. It brought me back to those old days, the fatigues and BDUs, that green color, that military bronze from Wiseau gives you is just amazing. And when I painted this piece, um, I wasn't sure what the response was going to be because it was kind of near and dear to me because it had, you know, that sentimental feeling to it when I saw that color for the first time. But the response was amazing. So I knew I needed to do an instructional video just to walk through the steps and how I created it from the top where you're going to see I took out the leather and I replaced it with this beautiful old world map and the color and the waxing, which everybody always has questions about with me is how do I do the waxing? This is another video, a tutorial step by step that's going to walk through more of how I wax. So I just thought this would be something fun to add. And as I continue to add tutorials to the Wise Owl Paint Party, it's just going to be more of this coming. So hopefully if this is something you're interested in, you stay tuned. Today we're going to be working on Military Veteran. It was a very popular one and I'm super excited to walk through each step including both painting the finish, top coating the finish, and adding that very special top map that I did on that desk. And that'll be what you see, what you probably saw at the intro. The desk is the pictures of the final and then I'm actually going to use a sample board to walk through the steps and how I got that finish. From. So, what are you gonna need for this finish? Specifically, starting with a clear primer. So I used, this is obviously a Wise Owl project, so I started with their clear primer. And I knew I needed a clear primer for this project because I was going to distress through the paint and only wanting just the wood to show through. So, starting with the clear primer. Next, oh yeah, that very, very special, brand new color, military bronze, which is just beautiful. I mean, for me, being a military veteran myself, it was kind of like one of those colors that was very nostalgic and took me back to the old, you know, BDU days, fatigue days when I first went to the military and had that really, it's a very specific color that definitely brings back memories of, you know, 20 plus years ago. So it was kind of cool to be able to do a piece and kind of, you know, thank all the veterans out there at the time that I did the piece, it was, I think it was Veterans Day weekend. So it was kind of cool how it all just culminated together and the uh, reach of the piece was really amazing. And uh, the response was even more amazing. So I knew this was definitely a video I'd need to do. So military bronze is the color. It's really deep olive green color, it's beautiful. And then I top coated the paint painted areas with their wax and I used their hemp oil wax and I have their palm brush for the, the main top coating part with a natural wax. This is what I use. It's a great brush, perfect for, you know, doing large areas and doing your top coating. And then I use their black walnuts uh, wax for just, you know, deepening the recessed areas, giving a little bit of age to it and just adding to that overall theming. And then I used one of their Wiseau Premium Brush is another one of their brushes. I do all my waxing pretty much with their the Wiseau Premium Brushes because they're just they're just perfect for all the different aspects of the detail work that you will do with waxing from big areas with the palm to the you know this kind of brush like here like this and you'll see it in the video. And then last but not least, we're gonna do the map. So I have the map here. It actually just had a piece that was left over that fits perfectly within this little sample board. 
I'm gonna walk through how you do that. And that is a redesign with Prima transfer. And so what that's gonna be is old world. And I'm gonna just walk through exactly how you peel off the backing, how you put it on, how I top coated it, how I added the accenting wax, everything. Just like what I did with the desk, I'm gonna do with the sample board. So you're gonna need that. And then last but not least, you're gonna need some varnish. And the varnish is what I do over top of the transfers just because, well, specifically for this piece, it was a desk. So I wanted to have a really like more solid, tough, durable surface, but also because I just feel like having something other than a wax over a transfer is just gives it a little bit more longevity with adherence and making sure it stays there. It's gonna be fun, looking forward to this one. This is one that got voted on as the next finish I'm gonna do. But if you're watching this video and man, I saw something else he did, I'd really like to see that done in a video like this, please drop a comment below and just let me know. I'm having a lot of fun doing these videos and getting them out to you guys and just sharing information and allowing others to try new things. So if there is something that you see that I've done that you'd like to see, be sure to let me know. And our first step will be priming. I've already done all the cleaning with this and I have another video, I'll put it in a tag here below somewhere of how I go through my prepping process. So you know exactly how to do that before you get started. All right, folks, so our sample board is all cleaned and primed. And those steps will be in the video description below with links to those videos specifically to show you how I clean and how I, I actually prime just to Keep it separate from the finished videos to make these finished videos just a little bit shorter for everybody. And if you've already seen those videos as you watch my new finished videos, you won't have to, you know, skip through those parts every single time. So we're just going to jump right into my military veteran finish, and it's going to start with Wise Owl's military bronze color, and it's this really new, beautiful green, dark olive, military kind of green. It, I'm a retired Air Force guy. And I remember back in the day we had the fatigues and the BDUs that really brings back memories from those days when we had this green color. And that's where I got the military veteran name for this finish, along with it being a little bit of an older um, look to the finish because I gave it some aging via, you know, the distressing and the black walnut wax. So as you can see, it goes on really, really smooth. I'm just kind of laying down a layer right now, and then I'm gonna come back over and I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit. For this particular thing, when you see the finished picture video, pictures within this video, it's gonna be of a desk. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend like this is the top of the desk, and in the inset is where I'm gonna do that old world transfer for you guys. So you'll be able to see Mashley paint on, the paint finish, which is the military veteran, and then the old world map to give you kind of the full sense of how I did that entire piece as a whole, not just the painting part, but how I actually did the map. And I actually also have a couple little video, a video and a blog about how I took the leather off of that particular desk. If you're curious about that, you'll find that on my website and I'll probably link that below for you guys too. Cause I know I had a lot of questions when I was working on that. Like how the heck did you get the leather off of that thing? And it was a little bit cumbersome, but with some of the right tools, um, you can make it a little easier on yourself. So as you can see, this Wiseau color covers really incredibly well, especially over this darker brown. So I'm just laying it down and then I'm gonna smooth it out. For this finish, I didn't want it to be heavily brush stroked, you know, so I'm just getting the paint on and once it's on, I'm going nice even strokes from side to side and letting gravity do its work. If you're new to Wise Owl, it self levels better than most I've used. So unless you overwork it, it's gonna settle and flatten out really, really, really well. So if that's the look you're going for, just make sure you don't overwork it. Just get it on, pull it flat and straight, and then walk away. So that's what we're doing. And I'm actually gonna do both sides of this sample board for you guys. So as I said, I'm gonna mimic the top of the desk with this area and then the back side will be a large flat area where I kind of show you a little bit more of the shading on how I use their black walnut wax 
to kind of give you a better idea of how I shaded in and around the corners of the sides of the desk, just to give you a little bit more detail into how I do it, because a lot of this area is gonna be taken over by that transfer that we're gonna put on here. So this is it, this is all I'm gonna show you for this. I'm not gonna show you painting both sides because it's gonna be basically the same thing. I'm gonna get the paint on and I'm gonna nice, nicely feather it out, to flatten it out real good. And then I'm gonna do two coats. Definitely gonna do two coats. You can see it covers really, really well. And you know, I mean, if you want a little bit of wood to show through, one coat will definitely do it for you. But if you want absolute complete coverage, I would definitely recommend doing two. So that's what we're gonna do on this. So again, I'll have both sides done. This side will be the mimicking the top of the desk. We'll have the shading in and around, the old world transfer down below. And then the other side, I'll do just the shading of the black water to show you how it works. Um, I'll come back with the second coat and I'll just paint that on with you just to show you how I do it. And then we'll be on to the next steps after that. All right, so we have one coat of military bronze all done, dry, and we're gonna do our second coat. Now, what I do with my brush, I throw it in a little plastic bag, leave it off to the side, just you know, pull all the air out of it and you know, just kind of sit it there. It's one great thing about Klingon and Wiseau brushes is you have the opportunity to do that with their paint as long as it's airtight. You can kind of sit off the side. I've had it in there for up to a week where it still stayed wet, so it shouldn't be an issue. So you're just gonna go ahead and grab it out of your bag and just go right back to painting. So I'm gonna dip my brush and we're just gonna get that second coat on. And as I mentioned in the first video, the long and the short of this painting steps for the finish is we're gonna get the paint on and then do nice clean strokes. Now the first one will go on really, really smooth and glide and easy and all that stuff. And the second coat is gonna have just a hair more friction to it. So you just wanna have maybe a little bit more paint than you would on the first coat to help glide it on and then get it where you want it to get it, you know, feather it out as you need to and then walk away. And once you walk away, gravity will kind of do its thing because Wiseau's paint is very self-leveling and it will settle and flatten as it needs to. So the biggest thing is get the good, a generous enough amount of paint on there. You don't have to go crazy, but enough where you can paint it all on, get it all the way across the areas you want, and then flatten it out, and then walk away. So I'm so I'm gonna do, and you can see I'm going kind of fast because again, the second coat's gonna have quite a bit more friction because you're painting, you know, your chalk style paint onto a chalk finish that's already there. So it's gonna have a little bit more tackiness than that, you know, just plain wood surface that we had to start with. So we're gonna get a little bit, like I said, a little bit more paint, the second coat, and we're gonna lay it on here and then we're gonna just walk away. So right now I got it on, now I'm just kind of feathering it out because for this finish, it was, you know, a little bit less brush strokes in it than some of my other finishes I do. It's just a nice flat surface. And if it gets too, like it's, it's pulling and tugging too much, you have too much friction, you can get your mister bottle out, you just kind of mist on it a little bit. That's another great thing about Wiseau's paint is it's water-based. So if you need a little bit, add a little bit of water to it. Where is my mister bottle? Somewhere around here. I don't think I'll need it for this sample, but you just mist a little bit on there, or mist a little bit on your brush, and then go back to it. If it's starting to feel like you're having a little bit too much tug and pull, where you're not getting a good, clean coat of paint on. That's it, that's all I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna walk away and let that flatten and settle, and we'll see when we get to the next step what it looks like. And again, I am gonna do the other side so I can go over some of the more of the waxing, knowing that a lot of this is gonna get covered with that transfer. So that's it for now. All right, so our next step is gonna be adding the transfer onto the, this recessed area right here to mimic, mimic what I did on the desk. So the transfer I used is Old World from Prima with Redesign, Redesign with Prima. It looks like this, this is just kind of a cutout piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually walk through the steps, me setting it down in there, 
and just showing you how that's going to work. And then we're going to apply it and then I'm going to top coat it. And then we're going to go through all the steps where I did the shading with the wax, and all that kind of good stuff. But to start us off is just simply actually applying it to the paint. So what you need and how I do it anyway, as I start directly to the paint. So this is the two coats of the military bronze from Wysol. And then we're going to apply it directly to the paint. And then we're going to top coat and then we're going to do the accenting wax and that's kind of the steps. We're going to walk through everything, but just to tell you where I'm starting, I'm starting from just the paint itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle the camera down, zoom in a little bit and kind of show you the steps of peeling off the backing, setting it in place and then actually rubbing it off of the front part. Um, the rubbing off is it's just a little time consuming just simply for the fact that it's one big solid piece. So I may fast forward through it a little bit. I may not, it just depends on how I decide to do this video, but I just want to actually show you how it works. Cause a lot of people have questions of, okay, I, I see what you have put a transfer on. It's really beautiful, but how the heck does the transfer actually work? So that's what this step's going to be just to kind of show you how the transfers work. And then with this sample piece, it really shows a great example of what the desk looks like with that having that where the leather was, recessed area to fill in with the map. So again, we're going to zoom in and I'm going to walk through how I apply the screen. All right, so within the tube, you actually have your transfer and it comes in usually in three parts and then you can connect it all together as you need to. And this just happens to be a piece that was left from when I did that desk because I cut out part of it to make it match up. And then within the tube, you're going to get this little tool. It's just basically so you could rub the transfer on, and I'll show you that here in a second. So it's going to have a couple parts to it. So it's going to have, let's see, I want to show you here. If I can get it to peel up. There we go. So you're going to have the backing, which is this part. And then you have the transfer itself, which is this, which is very sticky. So I'm not even going to touch it. And then you have the front side of the actual transfer that we're going to rub on and peel off. So the very first step is to peel off the backing. So and you want to make sure you know exactly where this thing is going before you start trying to stick it on because it is not going to want to move once you get it where you have it. Very gently lay this down and try to sneak it right into where going to want it to be here without pressing down on it at all. So slide it into place. I think I got it cut almost exactly, but if not, you don't need to stress over it because I'm going to distress a little bit of this anyway, and I'll be able to pull a little bit off if I need to. So we're going to set this down into there like so. Okay, so now I'm going to press this side really hard and start that transferring process. So, okay, so how this is going to work, let's get this on here anyway, is you take your little tool, this guy, and you just rub. And you'll actually see the front part of the plastic start to separate from the transfer itself as the transfer adheres to whatever the surface might be. And yeah, that's the thing's cracking. I got a couple of these because I do a little bit too much force into it sometimes. So this is gonna stick to your paint and then it's gonna transfer from this plastic sheeting onto your paint. And this is just kind of step one. There's a couple more steps to it to ensure it stays there. But this is just kind of step one. And you wanna take your time with this. You definitely don't want to be in a hurry. Start pulling it back and yanking on it if you're not 100% sure that the transfer has actually moved from the plastic sheeting onto your surface. Because if you start yanking too fast, then it's going to come come off in parts instead of all in one big beautiful transfer like you want. So you're going to start like say I got this corner. I'm going to go down especially for this, I'm gonna go down along the edge. Just kind of rub, get that on there. 
the same thing all throughout. Flatten this out, start to get the whole area to stick really well, or at least a little bit. And the tool they give you is pretty good. There's another tool that you can buy from them. Looks like a, a shark's tail, fish tail thing. Which is another tool that you could use. So again, I'm just gonna rub, rub, rub some more. And like I said, this takes a little bit if you're doing it right. And the bottom line to that is you don't want to be in a hurry. There's no reason to rush through this part of the process. And all you're gonna end up doing is ruining the transfer. So, okay, the transfer is very gentle or very uh, fragile, I guess is the right word. The part that's the actual transfer that's underneath this plastic right now is, is very fragile and sticky at the same time. So like imagine if you pull it up and put it back down to reattach, you got rip parts and peel parts. And so you really wanna just take your time, rub, rub, rub. And again, this is one big solid piece. So this is a little bit more challenging than if you had like a little flower here or a little, you know, something else there. It's a little bit different than it would be. If it was just small pieces or if it wasn't solid, like if it was just, you know, a swirl or something, this would definitely be a quicker process. But when you have a solid piece and you're really trying to ensure all of it transfers properly, you just have to take your time, folks. So I'm just gonna rub and I'm gonna pull a little bit and see what we got. And if you you can see, I'm not sure if you can in the camera, you can see the plastic coming up. And then because you can see through it, you can see the transfers down on the actual paint itself and not still stuck to the plastic. So you just kind of pull and play, pull and play. And this is what you're gonna do. And that's what I'm going to do throughout the whole thing. So what I'll probably do from here for the next part is I'm just going to kind of speed up the process and not do any talking. I think I talked through what you need to do. Now you can just kind of watch how I actually finish this up. And I'll just kind of speed up the video so you can kind of see me actually doing it and me actually peeling it up, but not having this take 10, 15 minutes, which is how long this might actually take for me to do if I'm doing it right. So I'm gonna probably speed up from here and then I'll start talking back up again when I'm done. All right, and there you have it. So now we have it all transferred on there. And you can see how, how pretty that is, right? So now, once you have it actually on there, you're gonna rub over it so you can, you can kind of feel spots that I didn't press down enough to make it really adhere, but, but it's, it's, it's stuck and it's attached, but it's not really adhered to the paint. So you're gonna wanna rub over it a little bit, just make sure you get it just so you can rub over it, you don't hear any kind of like movement or noise. Give it a good once over just with your fingers. Just like this. 
And this is kind of rough. You can see around the edges and stuff like that. It's kind of rough. Now, since I know I'm going to be sanding this part, if I had any things like this, I would just sand this back and then I would paint over it if I pulled too much paint off. Um, when I actually did the desk, it was a little bit more exact in my measurements and stuff like that. So I didn't have any of that. And then if you have some rough edging, that's fine because it kind of went with the look of it because it's kind of old world, old, you know, styling to what I did. So especially once I added the accenting waxes. Okay, so there you go. And that's what you're gonna get for it. And you can see because it is white, there's a little bit of the, the paint color coming through and that paint color really goes well with this um, old world transfer. So our next step is gonna be to take either a fine grit sandpaper or like a, you know, brown paper bag of some some point and go over the top of this just to really emphasize the fact that it's fully attached to the paint before we do anything else and that's like you could do it with your finger but that's not doing it just enough and for me when i use a sandpaper i use really really fine grit you're going to sand through it just a, a just a little bit in spots and i think for me for this finish using the sandpaper versus the brown paper bag to burnish it really added to the overall finish too because it had some spots where again the paint peeked through so that'll be our next step okay so next step we have uh we're gonna burnish this with a i have a uh, wet to dry sandpaper it's 600 so it's really, I mean, there's not a whole lot of grit to it. And I've actually used a few times before, so there's not a whole bunch of grit to it. And that's kind of what you're looking for. And really, we're just making sure that this thing is attached really, really well before we apply any top coat to it. So I'm just going to go over it really gently. And as you can see, it's pulling some of the paint up if you push a little bit harder in spots, which I think is, is cool because it gives it gives the map like an older look to it, which is kind of what I wanted, which is why I'm using sandpaper instead of like a brown paper bag or something that doesn't have any grit to it, just to uh, work that if you know, a little bit further. This really good. Some spots I'm gonna push a little harder than others. I'm going to try to go in the direction of my paint strokes too. Yeah, this is coming up really good. So you can see where it was white, it's starting to show a little bit of the color discoloration from the paint below, which is just adding to that old, old matte look that I wanted for this finish. But the biggest thing is that we're ensuring this thing is attached really well. Now again, if you're not wanting any of this to get sanded off or pulled off, would not use uh, sandpaper for this step. You really just want to rub it on. You could use the tool again, or you could rub. You just have to be careful you're not transferring whatever you're using's color onto your transfer. So, you know, whatever it is you end up using. A brown paper bag is probably a good thing to use for this. edges a little bit and this is basically what I did on the piece if I went over the edge I would just sand them until that, that part came off and then if I needed to touch up with the paint I would so I can just go right right over this and just sand that right off now this is a fine grit so it's not gonna pull it off all that easily but you see how pretty that looks right so imagine top coat you know some dark wax in the corners that kind of thing that's where we're going with it now, I'm not gonna clean all this up but obviously when I did the piece on the desk, you'll see it was a little bit more exact to fit within the space. But that again, is just as easy as taking a, a, a 
a little bit higher grit and pulling that off. And if you need to just touch up the paint before you go to the next step, which I had to do in just a couple of spots on the desk. But the biggest thing is I got this thing fully attached and it's ready for our top coating step. All right, so our next step for this finish is going to be top coating the transfer, which is gonna be a different top coat from what the rest was done. And the main reason for that was obviously uh, we wanna ensure it's fully attached. And I feel like for me, using a varnish or a poly is the best way to ensure it stays. Um, I've heard people that use waxes over top of it and ha haven't had any problems, but for me, I just like to ensure a little bit of extra protection. So anytime I'm using the transfers, I will use a varnish or a poly. And for this, we're gonna use Wiseau's matte varnish because we're gonna wax the rest and we want the the sheen to be pretty close and their matte varnish gives a really good matte finish, which will match the Wiseau's wax that we're gonna use around the outside and on the painted areas. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint this on and we're gonna give it probably three to four coats if you're using it for a desktop like I have in the example. And I did that because again, you know, we wanted the extra durability, which is the other reason why I used it for that particular piece um, was because it was a desktop. Now, if this is just like on the side of a drawer or something like that, you don't need to do four or five coats or anything like that. But like for me, I like to do thin coats. So you're gonna do, you know, for that desk, I think I did four coats total and I did four thin coats. So you just, I mean, it's really this, this uh, varnish paints on really, really easily. You just paint it on and get a good layer on there. And then you feather it out. For this, I'm using my Klingon F40. And it's either an F40 or an F50 is usually what I'm gonna use for application of the varnish. You're nice and gently lay it out like this. And as you can see, I had already taped it off that way we have clear separation between where I'm going to be waxing and where I have the varnish. And that's really all you have to do. The varnish dries quick. So you just want to get it on, lay it out flat, feather it in and walk away and let gravity do its work because it will settle quite nicely with uh, Wiseau's varnish. So I'm going to do you know, that same step for however many times. So if you're doing a transfer on the side of a piece, you know, two coats should be plenty. Uh, three, you know, if you're really worried about like in durability of, and then on the tops of things, you know, for three to five coats is usually what I'll say for something that is gonna get a lot of wear and tear, like a desktop, like we have for the example of uh, this finish. So. That's gonna be it for this. I'm not gonna repeat painting on three more layers. So the next step after this, I'm gonna peel up the tape and then we're gonna do the wax around the painted area. And then we're gonna go on to the accenting wax, which we'll do all over to kind of tie everything all together. And then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna do some waxing, both top coat waxing and accent waxing to continue to show you guys how to kind of, you know, uh, feather in the accenting wax to make it look like it's legitimately old, legitimately aged, and not something that was actually painted on by you. So, but that's it for now, really easy step. Again, I just painted or taped it off to keep that good separation. And I'll do a couple more coats and then we'll come back with the wax around the painted area. All right, so our next step is gonna be sanding. And what I'm gonna do for this is distress just the corners along the edges of everything. Uh, you can use any any number of sand, different sandpaper, sanding blocks, different kind of things. You can wet distress. For this, I just use a 220. And I just wanted to go over this really quick because as you'll see in the example pictures and as you'll see in the example pictures of this when it's done, 
It's just a light distress. So I have light, medium, and hard, depending on how you describe them. A light for me is just the corners and edges. And then it goes medium would be some flat areas and then heavy would be like really like all over the place kind of thing. So for this particular finish, I just did a light and I just really wanted to give it a little bit more of that age to look and bring back some of the wood. So that way it just gave it a really cool, like older, you know, look to it. That's it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the camera angle down and just kind of walk through how I sand to get this light distress, give you a little bit of uh, more detail on that specifically. Okay, so here we are with our distressing step. And close up just so I can show you. Now, you can see where the transfer went around the edge. I definitely don't want that as far as how the look I want. I want it to look more like this over here. So you, I'm not gonna go completely over it on this little video, but you can see, you can just kind of sand it away. You know, just do it gently. And then you might need to do a little touch up with the paint, but that's pretty easy. It sands away really easily, just like that. And I did have to do that a couple spots on the desk and then I just touched it up with the paint depending on what I needed or wanted for distressing on that particular part. So how I do it. Okay, so I do, when I do a light distress, it's on the corners and edges. So this is an edge. And what I mean by edge, I mean, if it comes to a point, then I distress it. If it's a rounded area, I'll leave it. And the thought process behind that is just like if it gets rubbed or touched over time, it's it's going to naturally get distressed. So that's the look you're going for, a really natural looking distressed look to the paint as, as if it just over time got touched over and over. And through that process, the paint got pulled off. So we're just going to take, and I usually will grab a little corn or a little square and I'm just going to gently distress just like this. And you can go across this way or you can go the long way. For this particular thing, I'm just gonna grab a little bit through my, the, like the padded part of my fingerprint and press and go the long way, nice and gently. And you can see it's already pulling away and nice and evenly. If you go across this way, you might end up pulling it downward, which really I don't want for this finish. I want a nice clean line. So I'm gonna keep going all the way across and voila. And what's cool, depending on the color of the wood, you might get all the way down past that, that finish of the wood in spots. You might just get down through the paint in spots. And that really cool, uneven look to the distressing is gives it a really naturally distressed look because it wouldn't naturally all be exactly perfectly the same. So you want to try to, you know, avoid making it all look perfect when you're doing this kind of thing. So then the corner, I wanted to show you this real quick. How I do the corner is the same way. So I'm gonna go long ways here, long ways here. And then what I'm gonna do from the corner in is I'm gonna stick it on the corner and I'm gonna pull it towards me. Just pull it towards me, just like that. Oh jeez. Pull it towards me, just like that. And it kind of gives the distressed a pulled look like if I was to rub on it or it got bumped into, or whatever you want to call it, just to make it as natural a look as possible. So you're almost rounding off the corner a little bit. And then just continue that same concept of my long strokes. And you don't want to go too heavy. You want to do nice. So if you got to go over two or three times, that's better than going really, really heavy where you're not looking to see what's underneath your sandpaper. And then you get to looking and you're like, oh my gosh, I did too much. You want to just one nice gentle stroke like that, and then take a look. One nice gentle stroke, take a look, that kind of thing. That's what you're gonna wanna do when you're doing a light distress like this, just to ensure you're not taking too much off. Because once you take it off, then you gotta paint it back on, and go through that whole process again. So it's just better to take your time and do it right. Okay, and then that looks good. So, and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go around, complete all the corners and edged areas. So anywhere that comes to a point is how I describe it um, for my light distressing. If it's a really, and rounded edges is a tricky thing. So if it's a really small rounded edge, I'll distress it. But if it becomes like a wider rounded edge, 
I will leave it because naturally that wouldn't get distressed down to the wood as much as a cornered edge was wood. So that's it. So I'm going to come back and we're going to do the waxing. And again, I have both sides painted for you guys. So ta -da! the other side I'll have distressed as well. And then we'll do a clear or a, well, what will be their hemp salve now. It used to be their hemp natural wax, which is called something a little different now. They just made a change with that. And that's gonna top coat it. And then we're gonna go over that with their uh, black walnut, which is gonna give it the aged look to it. So I'm gonna distress this on this side, show you how I blend it together, and then do the same thing on this side. So you can see how I did the aging in and around the corners of the desk, which will be the example pictures. But that's it for now. All right, so again, a up close view of what we have going on. I've distressed all around the edges and the corners, and you can see the dust and a little bit that's on the chalk. Don't stress all over that. That'll go away as soon as we add the salve. Now, I say salve because it was hemp oil, furniture wax, natural, which looks like that. And this is what I use most of the time, unless I'm doing white because it will have a little bit of a discolor. Very, very, very little. And I say very little just to say, I would probably not use this on white if you wanted to keep that pure white color, but I use this on pretty much everything else because it really, once it's applied, you don't really notice the color that you see here. But they've changed the, the name. So now it's gonna be Hemp Furniture Salve. So there, they have a whole line of amazing furniture salves. And this is the unscented hemp, which basically is replacing this same, you know, hemp formula that'll give you that really strong um, top coated waxed finish. Just the name is going to be a little bit different. So just to make people aware, move forward. I'll show you guys a little bit more about that. I have the big quart size for this guy. Um, and then I have the two inch palm brush, which if you watched another one of my videos, this is the best brush for waxing. Love this thing. So we're just gonna go right in. And if you've never used hemp, their, either their salve or their waxes, it goes on amazingly easy. Even without any streaking or anything like that, I'm gonna show you how this paint changes. You ready for this? Look at that. Now talk about waxing made easy. This is waxing made easy. And I, I shouldn't say salving, but you know, I've been doing this a while and calling it salve is still, it's gonna take a little while for me to get used to, but it's just a, bit, a better a better product. Cleaner, healthier um, to use on what you're painting, so. Look at that, how beautiful is that? Ta -da. And we're gonna basically brush this on, just like this, nice and easy. And then we're gonna use a shop towel and we're gonna buff it back off. And you can use a shop towel, a lip free cloth, a whole number of different things depending on what you want to use um, just depends on you what you want to do and the key to this because it is hemp seed salve based is it's going to have a obviously a very wet look to it it's going to take a little longer to dry because it doesn't have the chemicals in it to help it dry quicker and so you're gonna need to really buff it out really good. Make sure it doesn't have a wet look anymore once you're done. And then give it a little bit of time to dry. So, so if you're new to hemp, Isol's salves, this is what beautiful outcome you're gonna come with, with a very safe product, but you're gonna have the, the knowledge knowing it's gonna take a little longer to dry and 
you're gonna really gonna have to buff it out to ensure you don't leave it wet. You don't wanna leave it wet looking like this. I'll show you here in a second when I get to that part. But I mean, look at how beautiful that is. It couldn't have been easier, right? That's all there is to it. So let me get, just have old t-shirt. That's how, what I use for the most part. We're just going to pull off my excess and then buff it out a little bit. So it's nice and even and not so wet looking. You can already see I'm pulling a little bit of the wetness away. So I'm getting that out and then I'm going to switch your side here. So I got a dry side. We're just going to continue to do this. Let the sab soak into the paint, and then it's going to harden. It'll give you great protection on your paint and a great base coat before we do the accent wax, which will be the black walnut to give that aged look. But again, it's going to take a little longer to dry. So you're going to probably want to give it some time before you get on, go on to the next step, just because it is salve that's hemp based. But don't freak out, it will dry. Just will take a little longer. It's not something it's going to dry same day or anything like that. All right, here we go. And then I probably will buff it out one more time before I do the black walnut wax. But that's how easy it was. Look at how beautiful that color is. I love how the color really comes out after you put the salve on. It really gives you a good idea what the color, the true color is, because that chalky look to the paint changes once you top coat it. So that's it for now. We're gonna flip this thing over and we're gonna do the other side and then we'll wait for that to dry, buff it one last time, and then we'll hit the black walnut wax. All right, so I flip this over, right? And you can see I've done the distressing. It's got all these chalky, goofy lines. And I told you, those will disappear just like it did on the other side. Uh, we're not gonna touch any of this area. This is where we've done the varnish. We're gonna leave that alone. And we're only gonna wax over that with the black walnut wax. So, okay, here we go. Look at how beautiful that is. It's amazing. And again, this is now called unscented hemp furniture salve. And that was a change that literally just happened to uh, their products while I was working on this video. So I wanted to make sure I showed you both because I know in a couple of videos I've done, because this is primarily what I use for my top coating when I wax or salve now. Um, that I have this uh, hemp oil furniture wax natural written in the product description. I got to go out and update to now to say the unscented hemp furniture salve. So same thing, just making it a little bit easier to find knowing that salve is the way forward with Wise Owl's products. I mean, their salves are just incredible. If you're new to those, they have scented ones that are just amazing. It can be used as a top coat for paint or on wood, leather, all different kinds of amazing stuff. Maddie and I actually did a video, a goofy video, mostly me being goofy, of a bunch of the uses you'll find here on YouTube if you're curious more about that. But this stuff, I mean, just goes on beautifully. Nice and even. You're not going to have any streaking issues like you'll have with. I've used a lot of different waxes, and some of them just, you know, they either don't harden or they don't go on real well. They go on streaky, and then you got to do layers to get it to even out. It's the whole thing. And with theirs, it just goes on beautifully. I mean, look at that. This is awesome. So, again, we're going to take my rag, I'm just going to wipe it away. Wipe away the excess first. So just kind of pull one direction to kind of get it off of there. 
And then I'm going to find a dry side of my rag and just start the, the buffing process. Now I'm going to come back and buff it again, obviously, after I've given it some time to dry. And I want to repeat, and I repeat this a couple of times, because I don't want people to freak out. If you're new to their salve or their hemp-based waxes, it takes time to dry. So it's not something that's going to dry overnight. So don't get freaked out about it. I just wanted to make sure that, that was clear. Because I've heard some people be like, how oh, come it's not dry? And some of them that have all those chemicals and stuff in it, they may will dry overnight or dry within hours. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit, well, quite a bit safer and uh, works really, really well, obviously, that would be the one thing it takes a little bit longer to dry so all right so again i'm going to buff this oh it's paint off or not paint but the excess off and then i'm going to come back and give it a good another buffing that's a big thing you don't want it to look wet so when i brushed it on it looked wet now it looks a little bit drier and then once i buff it again i'll get it even that much more so we're buffing it basically to buff it into the paint, to have it join forces with the paint, and then it will harden and protect all the work you've done on your paint job. All right, there we go. So what you needed, you needed some of their new unscented hemp furniture salve. Again, that's a brand new thing. And one of their two inch Wise Owl Premium Palm Brushes, which is just the best you're gonna find for applying their salves. So that's it for now. We're gonna do the accenting waxes to show you how I blend that in. All right, here we are onto our next step of my military veteran finish. And that's gonna be the fun part of giving it some additional aging. So we've done the distressing, which did a really remarkable job just adding in that like touched and rubbed down look. But now we're gonna make it look a little bit older. And I think that really complements the transfer and the color and just that overall aged look to this finish that we're doing. So what you're gonna need is we have Wise Owls, Hemp Oil Furniture Wax and Black Walnut. And it's like a really deep, rich brown color. So it's Black Walnut but it's not really black necessarily. It's just, it's almost black, brown, but it's, it's the perfect color for what we're doing here. So it's not a brown, because sometimes when you do brown, it just looks uh, dirty. This black walnut gives it a really much uh, nicer looking aged look when you add it. So I have a one and a half inch flat Wise Owl Premium Brush, and these are what I use. They're synthetic brushes. Uh, these are what I use for all of my waxing now. So pretty much anytime I'm gonna wax, I go grab one of these, and just depending on the project or what I'm working on specifically would depend on the size. For this example, and even for the piece, this was a good uh, one to use because we're just kind of jabbing it in certain areas and spreading it out in certain areas and not getting it all over. So you don't need the round palm brush. So got my can, I'm gonna dip it in here and I have some shop towels to wipe off. So I'm gonna just rub it around in there real quick. Make sure I get just what I need. You don't need a whole lot. And then we're gonna start in the corners like this, like this, like this, and like this. And then additionally inside over the map area in the corners. And the reason why I start in the corners is because those are the areas are gonna be the darkest. So when, as you dab some of this off, it's gonna pull it off your brush. So you wanna make sure the heaviest spots are those spots where you want it to be the heaviest. So you're gonna start in those areas and work where around. So then I'm gonna start brushing in the cracks and crevices that we have. And in this particular map area, it's down in where the map touches the painted area. And then I'm just kind of kind of blend this up at this. And like this, right? Then we're just kind of kind of circular motion, rub this in and around the corners. 
this. We're just gonna kind of blend with our brush first and then we'll additionally blend as we wipe off with our shop towels. So for the corners, I'm gonna start in the corner and I'm gonna pull it down, pull it down. So we're pulling from the corner and in just to kind of blend it in. And then we'll go with that circular motion to just kind of finish blending this. We'll continue this down this way. We're gonna start in the corner and we're gonna pull out. And then we're gonna do that rounded circular motion to blend it in. Here, let's blend this in a little bit on this side as well. And again, in the corner, we're gonna pull it out from the corner. And round it off so it blends really well. Make sure that in there real good. Round it off. And I am gonna do the opposite side, and then when I do that, I'm gonna bring the camera in a little bit tighter so I can show you from a closer up angle exactly how I did that too. We're gonna have a couple of different angles in which I'll show you how this got done. But as you can see, it's already starting to get a more aged look to it. So as the wax comes off your brush, you can start to feather in spots where like if I was to go right here at the beginning, it would have black walnut wax all over it. So as you get more and more off of it, you're not gonna have to reapply anymore. It's just more of the blending process that you're gonna be working on. So I'm gonna blend it into the mat. You can go across the map a little bit. Now that I've got some off of it, you can go across some of these larger flat areas a little bit. And just again, continuing to have that blending in of the wax. And something like that. Okay. Now we're going to take our shop towel and we're just going to kind of rub. And this is where you can see, and if you can't, uh, you'll see a little bit better once I zoom in on the other side. But basically, you're going to take your shop towel and you're going to run from the inside, inside back out. So you can kind of blend it into what was already there. So starting with the lighter colored waxed areas into the darker. Because if you start with the darker into the lighter, you're going to bring more dark into light which is not what you want. You want it to be have a nice blended look. So you start where there was less wax and then blend into where there is more wax. If that makes sense, so hopefully it does. So starting where there's less wax and then blending down into where there's more. It's looking really pretty. Starting in the middle again and working my way back towards the wax. Again, going back this way. And if you get too much on your shop towel, just swap it out, get into one. This one, I'm not using up a lot, so it shouldn't be a problem for what we're doing here. Okay, again, where there's less wax, and then blending down into where there is, and just smoothing out what this looks like. And then you can decide how dramatic you want the corners to be. You can make them have a lot of wax on it or a little wax because it, while it's wet is a great time for you to pull it off or more off I should say you're not gonna be able to pull it all the way off but and that's what's cool about wise Owls waxes is it's a little bit easier to work with because the open time is longer but the caveat to that is because it has longer over time it takes longer for the waxes to actually set and dry so just be aware of that fact and then we're doing the same thing down in here. We're just kind of blending it out. So it goes into the map really nice. And it just gives that, I think like uh, the Goonies movie when they find the map. That's what I'm kind of thinking about with this is it's kind of frayed and dirty and cool looking. And that's when I saw this, when it was done on the desk, that's kind of what I thought of was that movie when they find the the map and what it looks like. So that's it. 
pretty cool, right? So let me tip it up and kind of give you an idea what we're talking about. This is what you're gonna come up with. And again, I'm gonna flip this over, show you a little bit more of the waxing process and blending and tip the camera down so you can see it a little bit better than you probably did for this section. But that's it for now. Okay, so on the desk, I have some large flat areas on the sides and I just wanted to show you um, how I blended in those corners with the black walnut wax and kind of saw the generalized idea of how I did it with the top and how the desk would look with the map and all that stuff. But here's our more in close look at the specific process. We'll get a little bit on your brush. Again, we're gonna go to the corners first. And I always go to the corners first because when you dip is when there's the most amount of wax on your brush, right? So, and with that being said, where you start is where you want it to be the heaviest color of your waxing. Because I wouldn't want to start right here when I just put a whole bunch of wax on there because the middle is not where I want the wax for this particular idea that I'm about to show you guys. So start in the places that you want it the most. And then you don't need to really go back to your can because you have enough on there initially to start in those corners, right? I'm just gonna jab it on there real good. Make sure it's evened out and I've gotten it evenly distributed along the filaments of my brush. And then now I'm gonna pull from the corners, okay? I'm pull from the corners, I'm gonna go down the lines. So down each cornered line, this way and then that way. All right. So take and pull that wax from the outside corner in. And I'm, as you notice, I'm not going back and forth. I'm going from the corner and out. All right. I'm do the same thing over here. And I'm always going from the corner out, pulling the most to the least because we're wanting this to blend, right? So then we have, this is what we look like. And that's ugly. We haven't got exactly how we want it. And because we went in that order, we have less wax on our brush now because we started to pull it off in other areas. So now we can start coming in with what we have on the brush because we know it's not thick enough that it's gonna ruin or darken it any further. So now we start rounding it. And again, Wiesel's wax is has a longer open time, so this is gonna allow you to really blend really well. So you're just gonna take it in and we're gonna round these corners off, just like this. We're gonna round it off. And you can, again, you can pull it in from the corner and continue rounding it. And you can just decide how much shadowing you want that corner to have, depending on how far you come out. So I'm not gonna come out too far, but I'm gonna just blend it out from here. And again, it's circular motion. Kind of give it that cornered effect. And then just kind of, again, pull the corner out into that blended area we just did. And we want to go all the way down this side. I'm sure the side fits a little bit. So it has a nice, softly, like almost like a vignette on a pitcher kind of effect. So we're going to go pull this out. We're going to round this off. Look at the other ones. And you want to be consistent. So you did those corners an inch or two out and do the, the next one an inch or two out or so. So it looks all the same kind of thing. Same thing down this way. We're gonna round this off like this. And just the rounding off is just like a natural effect that, you know, any kind of dirt or aging is gonna have. Okay, here we go like that, just like that. Okay, so from there, we are going to take our shop towel and this is where we continue to actually finish the blending. So we're gonna just start from the inside and work our way out. Start from the inside and work our way out. Again, because we wanna start in, right? And going out to the darker area. That way we're blending it in really good. Okay. Just like that. Stupid squeaky table, sorry. Yeah, I put some salve on it so it stops squeaking. Okay, so we're starting in and then going out. 
And again, if you get too much on your towel, just swap it out with a new one, but this is, I think is gonna be perfect. And you can see how beautiful this is. Now, when you have that, you wanna give it like a little bit of streaking down the middle. You just kind of go over it. Now that you're right towards the very end and you have a little bit on your towel, you can add just, just a very slight coloring from that same black walnut that just to add to, you know, a little bit along the flat edges. But that's all, I mean, that's all there's to it. I mean, look how beautifully that turned out. It's a very easy process. It's again, as I always say, you know, trust in the process and knowing the steps and how to do something is all it really is. And people always ask, how do I get, you know, this blended look with the wax? And this is, this is it. You just do the right steps and take your time, artistically take a step back and look at how you're doing the blending process. And voila. So there you have it, my military veteran finish. A unique twist on how to go ahead and paint, top coat, wax to give a really cool aged look. And also a little bit added in there of how to add a Prima redesign transfer. And then if you haven't already seen on our YouTube channel, we have how to paint hardware. So if you're looking for how to get that golden bronzy look, Go ahead and look on our channel. You'll find a video that specifically walks through those steps utilizing our heavy metals gilding paints. We have a bunch of those, depending on what you feel like works best with the color you decide. Maybe you decide to try the military better and finish yourself. If you do, please tag us, share it so we can see. I'd really love to see who goes ahead and uses these tutorials that I'm starting to add here on Wiseau Paint Park. And as always, if you're looking for any of the products you need to complete one of these finishes, please be sure to find the Wiseau retailer near you. I'll have a link in the description below on how to find the one nearest to you. And as always, happy painting.